This is calm body. You're in prison right now. Let's go. This ain't a beach. You ain't free yet. Come on. Run, run, run. Mike Popo's coming. You dying on me? Don't sue me. Sue BuzzFeed. It sucks. I'm tired. I'm trying to survive. You over here praying? God ain't gonna help you. Let's go. Sit down. <laughs> at California City State Prison. We're in the Mojave Desert, so it's a serious desert. I rode in here last night and it was nothingness. It's just, just desert and sand and sun. I am here to work out with inmates, get in shape. Hopefully I get swole, hopefully I survive. I don't think it hit me that I was going to prison to do all of this until we actually came to the prison. I've never been inside a prison before, so this is all pretty surreal to me, like walking onto the yard, going through those gates, seeing the barbed wires. I always thought I would just only see it in movies. I've never been incarcerated. I was in trouble with the law a lot when I was younger. Us walking through the hallways, I was a little freaked out. I didn't know what to expect. The rules of the street are different than the rules of prison, and I'm a visitor. I'm gonna try to be respectful and aware of my surroundings as possible. I only know as much as I've seen through these windows and what I can tell is it's gonna be a struggle, man. It's like boot camp. I don't even think they rested at all. I wonder if I'll end up throwing up, passing out. Oh, this dude's just chilling. That's gonna be me. That's, that's I was gonna say that's me in like a half hour. I'm just so nervous. Ugh. So each workout is an hour, hour and a half. I worked out in like two months. I just got back from Vegas. Right now I am going to the gym twice a day. I do really well with like short bursts of high intensity interval training. So I feel like I will do all right. I'm trying to act hard. I don't want to be the guy that's like slacking on the ground. It's like, I want to be cool. I want to be like, I can hang with these guys. I might be like, who the fuck are these guys at first? Cause who the fuck are we? It does feel a little like, I'm here to work out with you with Buzzfeed. So a little bit, I feel like a fucking asshole. As long as I, I don't suck the most. I think I'll be okay after this week. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put your feet together, hands by your side. We're gonna start off with a regular jumping jack. Don't pass out yet. Sideways, Rocco, let's go. So the guy who's training us this week is Koss. Koss is relentless. You know how to count to 10? You're gonna fuck up today. He's so understated when he's talking to you. And as soon as class gets started, like, he's a psycho. That's five laps, Rocco. No, it ain't. Don't cheat me. You ain't do five laps. I seen him in the men's fitness and you know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start doing this stuff, you know? And I've been doing it before, but it really encouraged me when I seen it. I was like, you know, he did it. I can do it too, you know, all that. The calm body workout is insanity times 10 with a prison kick into it. Within five days of this workout, they'll probably lose like five to 10 pounds. It's all body weight. I actually developed this whole routine in my prison cell. I started selling drugs on a milk crate and I grew it out to a multi-million dollar drug business and I was sentenced to seven years in prison. I came up with the idea of calm body while I was in solitary confinement and now I have over 7,000 clients. One, two, three. God, anything bad ever I regret it right now. You ain't even getting low. You ain't even getting low. I'm just trying to survive with my breathing. Let's go all the way back. All the way back. They waiting for you. My arms just gonna do it like this is non-stop. Bring it back. Come on. Come on. Let's go. All the way back. All the way back. Let's go. Push it. Push it. It's almost over. It's almost over. One lap. Give my hair. Give my hair. Let's go. Last one. Happen. Buddy. Let's go. When he's done with his workout sessions, they don't want to let him go. Here's somebody who came from where they came from who's gone out and become successful. He gives them hope. It was pretty good. They were really receptive. Most of them are pretty fit. Rocco is, is tougher than what I thought, but Eli, man, he almost passed out. I was in that situation before at one of the gyms I worked at, and I was dead last again that time. Once again, I was by myself. The coach was pinpointing me, like telling me, push it, push it, push it. And I didn't get nearly the amount of support I got at that gym than I did with these guys. I feel like they just build a camaraderie when they work out. We're like breaking that barrier and breaking that stereotype between different races and gangs and bringing them together. I just didn't expect to be so welcomed. No judgment, no one sizing anyone up, just total encouragement. I've never been in a workout environment like that before. They appreciate that they get outside people that want to do something with them. Imagine yourself like in a room by yourself and then you get like a toy that comes in and you're like, oh my God, you know, do you feel like a little kid? Like people actually care and that's what they appreciate. Waking up in the morning for day two, I am not looking forward to this. We're going out in 100 degree heat. Once again, I just want to survive. I'm nervous for the workout because I just want to do well, but the anxiety that I had coming in about the people there is totally gone and I'm, uh, I'm excited to work out with these guys and get to know them more. How y'all doing?
My name is Carl Robinson, but I'm currently incarcerated as Dwayne Dixon. I've uh, been incarcerated for about 13 years. I got my first job when I was 12, and it was kind of hard. When my family was very poor, I was supplementing that by, you know, selling drugs and stealing out of stores. As of right now, my release date is in October of 2018. I was on the run. I used my friend's ID to get some alcohol in the store, and I got arrested when I got outside, but I had Dwayne Dixon's identification on me. So that's how I became Dwayne Dixon, but my true name is Carl Robinson. What happened to Dwayne? I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Dwayne since 96. Frank Samara, it's almost six years right now for me, and I've got about four months left. I had the opportunity to do whatever I really chose. Next thing you know, I'm getting charged with the possession of uh, a bunch of cocaine. We don't see a whole lot of people coming to the prison. You, know, you be in prison, you think people that's out there on the street, y'all, they kind of soft and can't do this stuff. To see them get in and do it with us, and well, they were really cool, they weren't afraid. In actuality, they kept up pretty good. Rocco, he's a machine. How much does he weigh? Well, Eli did great too. You know, tucked it all the way out. Some people quit, and he didn't quit. So that's the major thing. I took this time to really reflect on who I am. It's helped me realize that I really need to do something great with my life. I started really doing a lot of studying and going within myself. Took psychology, got in college. I wanted to figure out what was going wrong with my way of thinking. And I figured, okay, if people go to school, in eight years and 12 years, I can use this as my university. And I can choose to do something more with my life even though I'm behind the wall, so that's what I chose to do. There has to be some reason why you're here, not just to commit crimes. You're here for a purpose, so you gotta start realizing how you're gonna do good things for people. We're driving back um, from day two of working out. Today was a little bit more difficult emotionally. Coming back to jail is always strange. Seeing the gates open, it's like, oh shit, like I don't need to be handcuffed to walk through here anymore. And the smells, the cleaning supplies that they use on the floor, like that just like brings back memories. It's, uh, I guess it's traumatizing in, in some sense. The effect of prison on a human being. It's a lot weighing on a person, like you're away from your family, or you're away from your children, you're away from all the people that love you. It really strips you of your identity. You know this kind of shit, but until you're like in their environment, talking to people who are living with the day-to-day -day reality of being, in my opinion, unjustly locked away, I don't know, it's really a different thing to have a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. I almost don't want to get to know these guys anymore. I almost, I'm scared to how I'm gonna feel and how frustrated I'm gonna be just learning about them even more. You get excited for them because they have so many big plans when they get out. I currently have a business that uh, LLC, Fresh Out Ventures. I have this business I'm starting, it's called The Clink. But you know how hard it is for people that were in the system to get any opportunity. And it just, it just makes you so, it makes you just so angry. It makes you just so frustrated. We're headed back to the prison for dinner with the inmates. I'm a little nervous because we're gonna be around more inmates and we're not in our circle. And I feel a little nervous to be eating in the prison cafeteria. <laughs> that same kind of like first day of school feeling. Where the fuck am I gonna sit? Are people gonna be staring at us? People will stare at us. People are, yeah, yeah. they're gonna be like, what the hell are these assholes? Yeah. yeah. I was on the streets, I ate a lot of good food. Oh, and really? Organic food and stuff. Like, really? Yeah. Trade it up. You, you guys That's do a lot of trade ups? Yeah. So we had our first dinner uh, with the inmates. The cheeseburger was delicious. I love the cheeseburger. I ate Rocco's cheeseburger. I didn't really feel uncomfortable. You know, we sat down with Frank and Carl. Um, and just had a great conversation. To think you were in amongst criminals, you're thinking it'd be a lot of stab, a lot of robbery, a lot of violence, yeah. but it's not. 13 and a half years, I've never been in a fight. I've seen more men cry in these places than I've ever yeah. imagined. I thought this was super tough. Yeah. I've seen tears come out of some of the people that I would never guess. Yeah, we talked about everything. We talked about issues, we talked about art, we talked about music, we talked about the system, we talked about food. I've read over, probably in this time, well over 300 books. So you guys have no access to like social media at all? No. Like just, just the phone call? Yeah, it's I've been just... looking forward to my first selfie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I dream about putting on clothes that don't match everyone else's. I have dreams about, okay, I'm picking out my pants, I'm picking out my shoes. I haven't had that great of a stimulating conversation in a really long time. They still have this humanistic, positive approach to life and I, and I, 
it's just inspiring. A lot of times we feel so alone. Like, it's just me that's going through this, but I want them to know you're not by yourself. You know what I'm saying? I've been there, and here's where I am now, and you can be there too. These are two people that have been locked up for years. It scares me how little America knows about the system and who these people are. Frank uh, he's no longer uh, allowed to interview due to uh, political reasons. Unfortunately, when we come into the system, we get classified based upon your race. Certain race groups uh, don't feel like they should be interviewing. You have some people that impose policy on other people who are willing to get violent. You know, you're trying to go home soon, so you don't want to cause any waves. In our class, everyone represents a planet, and Frank represents the sun, that bright light that shines on you and keeps you going with energy, and so that's Frank. This experience is becoming more emotionally taxing than uh, physically taxing. I was a little worried about the workouts, but it's not the most difficult aspect. I'd say the most difficult part is getting to know these guys and hear their stories and just realize like this easily could have been my experience. It's just a lot of luck and circumstance that kept me out of this level of trouble. It just makes me feel helpless incredibly like heartbreaking too. It's particularly like Ping's story is really like striking something in me. So my name's Ping, I'm 32. I grew up right here in LA in the suburbs, you know, normal, normal life. Never been in trouble in my life, never had a juvie record, never had any run-ins with the cops. And one day I made a mis mistake that cost me 13 years, conspiracy to commit robbery. Everybody has these stereotypes of like, all these guys that end up in here, they're, they're criminals, they're drug dealers. I mean, I went to private schools. I lived in a good neighborhood. Like, nobody I knew was in gangs or in drugs. And like, I get it. Like, you know, we're doing stuff that we're not supposed to be doing, but you know, for something that never played out, they added 10 years on my sentence for talking about a gun. So you didn't even commit a crime. Exactly. Personally, I feel like you get young kids in here, you know, I was 19, I was 20. And for one mistake, you get screwed. And I don't get out till I'm 33. And it's like all the years where you're building your life, you're getting your education, what chances do we have when we get out? You know, I get out in six and a half months and I mean, I'm, I'm terrified. I always like challenging myself and trying to, you know, get better, you know, set the bar a little higher each time. So would love to get involved with a uh, con body and cost. I would train lives, with him so. for sure. I let him set the pace and then I just keep up. I'm scared to be next to Ping, but I'm also very excited to be next to Ping. I'm motivated. Now, Cause it's like, he's gonna be yeah. like, like top, <laughs> top out in this game, so focused, yet he, he knows when I'm slacking off and he like encourages me to keep yeah. going. What's the first thing you're gonna do when you get out, dude? You thought about oh, it, dude. what's the first thing? As soon as I get home, strip my shirt off and jump into that swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to jump in the swimming pool, get some McDonald's hash brown. And, you know, <laughs> I can't wait to just get out there and just stand on the street corner and just take a deep breath and just look around and not see chain link fences yeah. and barbed wire like somewhere in my vision. This entire experience, I know it sounds cliche, but it just makes me feel tremendously grateful for the freedom that I do have. We complain about these really just dumb things like about like work or family or life or whatever. And it's just like, at least we're able to go outside and get some hash browns. Eli and Rocco is, uh, they're working through it. I feel weak and tired. If I were at home, I definitely would not be working out today. It feels on the verge of unsafe. I would throw him from prison and pass out of prison. That's right. Because, uh, well, it's fuck, man. I can't guarantee how you're gonna wake up. Just tell me how you're doing. I don't think I'm a fish. I'm just really frustrated. I don't know what, like I'm so fucking behind on it. I feel like total shit. I just feel terrible. <laughs> I knew no one was gonna like judge me, but I just didn't want to waste their time. And I, I just got psyched out. I felt so bad because these guys just want to talk to you after you're done working out. And I was just so pissed off at myself and also like ashamed. Just feeling like emotionally drained and overwhelmed feeling like we live with a, an incredibly broken system and that we're just basically sacrificing people's lives instead of giving them a second chance. I'm learning so much about myself. I'm just realizing I'm like just really hard on myself. I'm a little too much in my head sometimes. This trip has changed me, opened me up, made me more aware about not only the system and human beings and people and hope, but 
my health and my well-being. Last day, final day, full body. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> So it's over and these guys did the time. They killed it. They went pushed through it. They applaud each other. They worked as a team. These guys are straight brotherhood. The workout just brought us together. Like you're going through something together. And, and that brings out the best or worst in people. And all I saw was just the best. A lot of people were, were very skeptical until they actually seen costs for him to come in and help us out. They feel like they have a future ahead of them now. And so I think it's a lot more hope. I can't even put it in words, like being dead last and like struggling and, and doing all that and like people that went through so much shit and like still like, like caring about you and like, it's, uh, and they're just strangers. It's really, uh, yeah, it's, it's rare, even in everyday life. It, it, um, it's just real. It's a dream that I, that I pictured and it became a reality. They're really hungry and it pushes me to the next level to like, now I gotta fix a bigger problem. And it's gonna re-inspire and not only, you know, help myself and my family, but you know, thousands of guys in here and just be, create a huge movement. This experience has been just intense, physically, emotionally. I don't think that I can translate the impact uh, with language. I don't know how to say goodbye to these guys. Words can express what it felt getting to know them and what they did for me, so it, it's hard to say goodbye. Seeing all this shit makes you feel helpless, too, because, like, what can one person do? But then you see someone like Haas, who's been through this shit, who comes back, so it does have impact. This week, um, you guys give us our humanity back. When all this happens, it's like you go to court and they strip you down to your, your charges. You're just a list of charges on a sheet of paper, then you go to the county jail and you become a number on a tag. And they, they I'm sorry. Um, and they, uh, they move you around like inventory. You know, you're like cattle. Then you come to prison and you become another number. You stay in a cell, you stay in a room, you stay in a day room until they let you out. And it gets in your head. You feel like you're nothing. And for all you guys to come in here and just, dude, just be cool with us. It's like you guys give us our humanity back. I feel human again. I feel like, I feel normal, you know? So. Here is your rehabilitated men. Just on behalf of the men in this room who are trying to rehabilitate themselves and for myself, I like to ask society for forgiveness. What would I say to the guys if they're all watching this? I mean, you opened my eyes. I mean, you opened my heart. You opened my, my soul. I care about you guys. I hope you guys get everything you want out of life. And we also give forgiveness to those that have, have hurt us along the way. And we put all those things behind us. Everything is a clean slate. Thank you for letting me in your space. Thank you for being welcoming. Thank you for letting me work out with you. And thank you for changing my life. A lot of us here are leaders and we can help those next group of young men and young women not to get to these stoops. What I suggest is to not give up. It's easy to say, but it's harder to do. And we're not coming back here. This is the last time you're gonna see us in this environment. You know what I'm saying? That far. You know what I'm saying? That far. You know? Rock on, we alive, bus feed. Hey, hey, say we got what you need. Yep, yep, doing time, rocking our cars, yeah, doing fine. Everybody, everybody, what, what, what? Everybody, everybody, what, what, what? Everybody, everybody, what, what, what? Gotta get it down, gotta get it down, boys, feet. <laughs>